Okay, I'm going to show how I get a perfect mesh between my bevel and my pinion while doing this test. First things I do is I just put in the bevel by itself, shim it to the pinion as close as possible, and as we can see inside, it's a 100% teeth contact. Let me get the flashlight and show that. It's at 100% uh, teeth contact. Okay, so the teeth are straight on the bevel gear. Now, I'm going to go ahead and run this real quick, and we're going to get an amperage reading. This amperage reading, I'm going to take down as notes and adjust from there to figure out how well I need to make my mesh. So, we're going to move the camera for a little bit here, just to position it a little bit better. Excuse me, I'm having difficulties moving my camera. There we go. Okay, zoom up. It will do it. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, shoot this. Okay, a little bit less than four. So with a little bit less than four, what we're gonna do is go, is we're gonna go um, down and see if the amperage goes down. So I'm gonna go one full turn down. So here we go. Watch the amperage. Right away, you hear the uh, gear spin much easier without resistance. Um, and it spins very quickly, and you can see the amperage is lower. And this position is actually closer to um, being a little bit less than 100% teeth contact. So, as we can, see, I don't know if we can see that very well in here because it's kind of hard to see. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and go down just a tiny bit more, the tiniest bit, uh, one more turn. So. This is just demonstrating. Okay, here we go. Go ahead and uh, get this up on camera again. Go one turn back up. Okay, this is the best position. Let's look at the amperage. You can see right away the amperage is lower. 
the position of the pinion. is pretty close to 100% but not exactly. It's about a 90 90%. <clears throat> and you know, you can hear the <clears throat> gears spin really well. And what this means is that we want a tiny bit less contact if we're going to be at 100% tooth contact. Um, so to get that tiny bit less contact, we're going to take 0.1 millimeter shim off the top of the bevel and put it underneath and we'd be completely done. We'd have a perfectly good mesh. However, oh, there's a big however on this. You cannot do that in this setup because there are no extra shims to take off. So basically you're going to be grinding this up against uh, your bushing or bearing in this type of setup. So we are staying away from that as this has been extremely reliable uh, and uh, the friction is a little bit less. There is a tiny bit of a heel on top of the bevel gear here. Certain bevel gears do not have that, but this one does. And that tiny bit heel means I could take off the 0.1 millimeter shim and go to that, but I am not going to do that because I want just that tiny bit little extra space that the gear can rotate, especially if the bearings uh, do somehow fall in. So. What that does is it still gives it enough uh, room to rotate and not extremely full of pressure so it becomes unreliable at some point. Uh, this will last a hell of a lot longer this way and it's pretty much proven this way. Um, it's just simply because you can't just go by what the gun sounds like. I mean you have to go by making everything work together and I don't do no guess. I really don't like to just guess and here it is. Uh, this just makes it so much easier. Um, I can pretty much get uh, perfect on shimming it without this <coughs> and going by a little bit of the sound, but this is by far going to show me the numbers and be more efficient and the best way to go. So, I mean, that's what I highly recommend. And from right here, we can see that it's the same position as before is the best position. And I just kind of wanted to prove that on here. Um, so I'm pretty much going to say that's out and done. I'll catch you guys later.